the bridge to Helheim. I forget its name. She forgets too. But she does remember that only the dead may cross it. That part wasn't so easy to forget. This is a video I should have made a long time ago. And I'm sorry that I didn't. Because in an age of broken AAA releases, scant content offerings, and poor excuses for originality, one game stood apart from the rest. One game realized the potential of a video game to elevate itself to an art form, a genuine and unique experience. I suppose, with its recent release on Nintendo Switch, this video comes better late than never. If you're not watching this with headphones on, you should be. Trust me on this. My name's Azrael, and this is my review of Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade is a game developed by Ninja Theory, a studio known for the stunning quality of its independently developed video games. In Hellblade, Ninja Theory's philosophy of bridging the gap between AAA production value and independent creativity is most apparent. An immensely detailed world, a dark, unyielding narrative, and a strong, vulnerable heroine lend themselves to a beautiful, painful, and often heartbreaking experience that offers more for $30 than most AAA titles can muster for double the price. You play as Senua, a Pictish warrior with a unique perspective on the world around her, brought on by a clear case of acute psychosis. She hears voices sees visions, and has an incredibly difficult time discerning what is real and what is hallucination. Senua is on a quest to the Viking realm of the dead, Helheim, to retrieve the soul of her beloved who was killed and sacrificed during a Northman raid on her home. To find her way through the underworld, Senua will have to solve puzzles, fight monstrous enemies, and confront the giantess Hela all while battling the darkness within and without. The testimony and advice of actual mental health patients and professionals were included in the production of Hellblade, rendering Senua's struggle with her illness in a stark realism and reflecting the daily life of modern-day individuals who struggle with psychosis. It should say something about Ninja Theory's commitment to authenticity that the very first credit shown is given to a mental health advisor. Right away, Hellblade introduces one of the most important and prevalent features in the game, the voices. He's there, you know it. There's no doubt about He's it. Lost. The source of the darkness is in Hellheim. Senua is plagued by disembodied voices that she hears in her head a symptom of her psychosis. The voices continuously mutter and converse with each other, thickening the atmosphere and making a largely empty world feel crowded, like you're being forced to share space with people you cannot see or touch. Sometimes, the voices provide clues of how to solve a puzzle or warn the player of an impending attack. They function as both guide and obstacle. And personally, I think it's my favorite part of the game. More so than the combat, or the lore, or the narrative, I enjoyed having to navigate the voices in my head, having to find ways to use them or work around them as best I can. I enjoyed the moments in time when they were impossible to ignore, the times when they would relay information about what I was experiencing in the moment. Sound design was a feature that Ninja Theory clearly spent a lot of time refining, understanding, and perfecting, which makes this game special and sets it apart from the rest. They recommend that you wear headphones to play Hellblade, and if you don't think that's necessary, I urge you to reconsider. 
There's a lack of UI elements that helps to maintain the immersion in a world that's beautifully rendered and painstakingly crafted. From lush forests to foreboding wood and stone structures to the bowels of hell itself, the game environments are dense and detailed, and they offer a variety of gameplay experiences that range from battling a fiendish horde in an open field to being stalked through claustrophobic corridors by an unseen horror. The enemies are appropriately hellish for an odyssey into the Viking underworld, taking creative forms and displaying horrifying powers. The foot soldiers pose a basic threat, appearing more or less human while the bosses strike a much more frightening visage and present a much greater challenge. Combat is pretty basic, there's a light and heavy attack, a stun kick, a dodge roll, and the ability to slow time and temporarily halt an enemy's special ability, opening them up for a flurry of powerful attacks. Like I said, combat itself is not too daunting, but that doesn't mean you should underestimate your opponents. You can still very much die, and each time you do, you get closer to permadeath, where Sinua's quest ends in failure, and all progress you've made thus far is lost. The darkness touched you. Everyone could see it in the hollows of your eyes. A gaze. Averted from life. Perhaps one of the most impressive things I've found in Hellblade was a strong protagonist. Strong here meaning relatable, vulnerable. Not just a character who is physically strong. She's not. She's only human. And not just a character who speaks few words or closes off their emotions. She honestly can't do that. She can't help the voices in her head echoing her own insecurities back at her. She can't hide her fear, or anger, or desperation, because in truth, all of those things lie inside of her. And that's where the darkness comes from. And that's where she needs to face it. Hellblade is as much a journey inward as it is a trek to a physical place. And I think the sheer skill and expertise that has come to bear in building this tragic heroine and propelling this epic narrative is part of what makes this game, in my opinion, one of the best games in recent memory. If you guys have seen me review games or movies before, you know I don't apply numerical values to my reviews. It's hard to be objective that way. I might give a game a 4 out of 5 for having a great story, fluid gameplay, but substandard graphical design. And you might not care about graphical design at all, so that game is a 5 out of 5 for you. So instead, I'll just give my final thoughts on the matter and let you figure it out from there. Hellblade is clearly a conceptual magnum opus. That much cannot be denied. The developers put a lot of work and resources into authenticity, world design, and narrative progression. This is not an RPG. It's not a Souls game with punishing difficulty in combat. This is not an ongoing game as a service. It's a self-contained, fully realized, single-player experience. And at a time when AAA publishers fleece their player base for every penny they can, drip-feeding content and pushing microtransactions, Ninja Theory delivered a full-content game for half the price, and it's available for all major consoles and PC. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I certainly enjoyed making it. I love Hellblade. It, it easily makes my top 10 favorite games list of all time. I'm going to leave some links to the game page for Hellblade in case you guys want to check it out for yourselves. I'm also going to leave some links to a couple of mental health resources. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just, I'm a bit sensitive to issues like mental health. So those will be down there too for anyone who might like to use them. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more gaming reviews. If you have any suggestions about what I should review next, go ahead and leave a comment below. My name is Azrael, you're watching Fireforge Gaming, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!